Good morning. Today I would like to speak to you about flowering and fruit sap, two factors that really influence your crop yield. Okay, so to begin with, we need to talk about the flower structure as um, we know it. So grapevines have a, what we call a perfect flower, at least commercial grapevines do. Um, and a perfect flower has both male and female parts. Uh, some of the wild species are imperfect in that they have only male or female parts. So the female part of a flower is the pistil, and it's composed of the stigma, the style, and the ovary, which gives rise to the fruit and seeds. The male part is known as the stamen, and it consists of a filament along with an anther from which the pollen arises. In addition to the, these parts, there are flower petals, which in this case in the grapevine are fused as a corolla. And as the flower develops, it forms this cap that pops off the flower, as you see during flowering, uh, known as a calyptra. Um, and this separates from the base and then pops off, allowing the pollen or enhancing the ability of pollen to fertilize the eggs in the ovary. So grapevine is not an individual flower, but is a cluster of flowers called an inflorescence, as we see here in this picture. So flowering takes the course of two seasons for it to fully um, develop. Uh, in the beginning, in the first year, and this is a diagram outlining this. I will go into more detail in the subsequent slides uh, with actual pictures. But in this uh, first year uh, of a newly forming shoot, we get bud burst. Um, and in that, on that shoot, we have the start and induction of flowers forming in the buds. Uh, inside that bud is a floral meristem. Uh, that is, given, that is a lateral meristem uh, known as analogen. Um, and the meristems are, are, are tissues with dividing cells in them that give rise to the organs in the plant. That inflorescence begins um, and continues to divide into branches. And those branches each have their own little meristems that continue to develop. And this is as far as we get by veraison in that season. So this is all occurring um, during the springtime. Um, and then those buds, those latent buds, go into uh, bud dormancy for the following season. And they come around and then those, as bud burst occurs, as bud swell is occurring, those influences, inflorescences uh, continue to develop. The branches develop and then ultimately at the end of those branches we get three to four flowers forming. We have flowering which is what we call anthesis and then pollination or fertilization occurs and berry uh, formation begins. During this process in the second season there's the formation of that new shoot again and we are repeating the cycle of developing new latent buds that initiate the inflorescences for the following year. So again, an analogen is a lateral meristem in the bud that gives rise to the inflorescence. Okay, so season one. We've just pruned our vines and we have two buds that are beginning to swell here. These are fruitful buds that had come from the previous season, which I call season zero. Those buds break and start to grow into a shoot. On that shoot, we start to form leaves. Here's a petiole, and in the axis of that petiole is a latent bud that is beginning to develop, to form on those new shoots. When that season is finished, that bud is fully developed, we have what we call a compound latent bud. 
and it consists of three buds, um, a primary bud here, the largest bud in the center, in this cross section, this drawing of, of what we consist of a bud. Here's an actual cross section through a bud with our primary bud in the center here. And then there is a secondary and a tertiary bud. This primary bud is what's going to break and give rise to the shoot with the two inflorescences on it. Um, if we should get bud burst and then a frost, this month would die, but the secondary bud would be protected and then it would grow and produce um, flowers, but not as many flowers. In fact, we see about a 50% reduction in yield. If that one should also get frosted, then the third one could potentially break and start to grow, but it's unlikely that it would have any flowering. So there'll be a reduction in yield. The primary bud is the key bud here uh, in terms of development. Here we have a, a, a lateral bud that'll give rise to a lateral shoot. Okay, so here's a cross section of that bud. And here we can see in that cross section of the bud, a primary bud, a secondary bud, and a tertiary bud. And if we zoom in on that primary bud, we can see in this cross section, a shoot apical meristem. So this is the key central meristem that begins to divide and form these lateral meristems that um, then give rise to the inflorescence. And that inflorescence is starting to branch here. That lateral bud meristem that came off of that shoot apical meristem can, can develop into either a tendril or an inflorescence. Uh, the inflorescence being the flower, the tendrils being those little things that grab on to things off the shoot. And if you look at a shoot, you'll see that it is the buds near the base of the shoot that produce the flowers or the inflorescences. And that will vary based on the genotype. And the higher the buds are closer to the shoot tip, the more likely they are to form a tendril. And this is controlled in part by um, hormones. So uh, that inflorescence is developing in season one. It's going to set up our crop potential for season two. And the factors that influence season one affect season two. So that inflorescence is affected by the light. That is, light produces photosynthesis in the leaves that are adjacent to that cluster, and that photosynthate um, enhances the fruit development or the, the development of that meristem. Um, also, it's impacted by the water supply. You want to have plenty of water at that time. You want to have good temperatures, not too cold. Uh, and you want to have good nutrient status. All of those factors can influence the development of that bud and that inflorescence. In season two, uh, floral development continues during bud swell. So as that bud begins to break, um, the, the inflorescence continues to develop um, and the flowers begin to form. The branching continues to develop and usually about three or four flowers will form at the end of each of those branches. Flowering occurs, or anthesis, resulting in the caps falling off or popping off, um, and this enhances the flower's ability to pollinate. So pollination occurs with pollen forming at the anther, and the flowers are self-pollinating. They do not require insects, but insects can pollinate them but most commercial varieties will self-pollinate. Um, and the pollen will land on its own stigma. The pollen will germinate and a pollen tube will penetrate um, the egg in the embryo that will um, fertilize that egg. So once pollination occurs, we have fruit set. And this is, uh, the clusters are usually 
hundreds of flowers or can be hundreds of flowers. Um, and typically a cluster will only pollinate 30 to 50% of its flowers. Um, this is dependent in part on genetics. So there's variation in flowering depending on the cultivar. Some have higher percentages than others. However, pollination is also very sensitive to temperature and water. Just as in the first year in season two, environmental conditions have a big impact on our fruit set. Again, it's dependent upon photosynthate coming from the leaves. The higher, the better photosynthesis that is going on, uh, the more likely you are to have better fruit set. The reverse inverse of that is that if you do leaf pull prior, adjacent to that cluster, prior to um, fruit set, you will reduce fruit set because of the lack of photosynthate coming from those adjacent leaves. This is a typical, uh, or not a typical, this is an atypical uh, cluster that has been impacted uh, by the environment, um, whatever those factors were that was involved in this. And we see some berries that have developed normally, other berries that are small, this particular berry is seedless, and other uh, ovaries that never even developed into a berry. So we have abortion going on, we have fruit set happening. Um, the environmental conditions were um, clearly impacting this cluster. The number of seeds in a berry can influence its size. So the more seeds, the more likely, and the seeds are dependent upon fertilization. So in summary, flowering and fruit set are very sensitive to the environment during both seasons of the flower development, both season one and season two. It's not just dependent on the current season for fruit set. And fruit set determines yield. Thank you for listening.